And you can see already here, uh, this is a former mouse piece. You can see here the dirt uh, from our spittle. Uh, so of course this is to be cleaned. So that's why I always recommend if you clean mouse pieces, if you want to have a long, long joy with your product, then clean it a little bit on the sides in order that there is no plug left after playing. And if you clean it inside, do it very gentle yeah? and do it the other way. So not like this where you pull down, yeah? do it the other way, very gentle yeah? in order that you don't rub too much here, the rails and that the mouthpiece isn't getting damaged over a long period of time. Hard rubber mouse pieces can last for many, many, many years on a very high level. And so um, it's just up to you how carefully you look for this mouse piece after the playing that there is nothing left, no spittle left. And when you clean it, that you take care. Okay, so this was the first topic. Let's see what's coming in. How do ampipoly reads compare to the shear reads I have here? Uh, I unmuted everyone, so. Normally it should be possible that people talk to me. Okay, how do ambipoly reads compare to Lichia reads? Um, hmm. That's a very good question because um, we have two things to have in our mind when we talking about the strengths of a read. So if you have a read, it's not only the strength of the tip, which is of course very important, and which is measured. Yeah? So for the accuracy of the different strengths, the companies measure the tip, yeah? how the tip is softer or harder. But that's not the only important information. The second information is of course, how hard is the tip here yeah? at the peak? Yeah? Because this is that what you push with your lip yeah? and what you press on the mouthpiece. So let me explain that probably if you imagine this is a reed. Yeah? So it's not only this part, yeah? it's also the whole dynamic of a reed, which is important for the strength. So if this is on a mouthpiece, yeah? even this strength on the back is important. And so reeds, in the um, uh, division of the strength. Uh, so if we decide to label them with the right strengths, then we have to think of both parts. Yeah? Not only if it is very soft here, also the thickness and here, the beak. Now, comparison to Leger, I would say um, the reeds are a bit harder, so probably a quarter of the, um, the strengths. So if you have uh, three and a half from Leger, I'd say it's a three and a half plus from the Ambipoly, from the strength. And um, because here the back is a little, gives a little bit more support. Why? This is important for um, the lower notes here. So in the middle and in the lower register, if you get a little bit more support from the back, you have a richer and a fuller sound. It's not so empty. Nevertheless, of course, if you go up, then the reed has to be gentle. So uh, hopefully this is uh, answered correctly. Are you happy with that answer, Thomas?
Okay, material. Yeah, hmm. that's the next um, good question. So in comparison to Ligier, I have here Ligier read. And uh, it's not my part to uh, criticize any company. So please, I'm, um, yes, I'm not talking about competitors in a way, but uh, the Ambipoli and the Ligier read, as you can see, it's a completely different material. So this material is an other kind of, um, yes, uh, um, synthetics. And um, this synthetic here has a lot of advantages. The advantage is, first of all, you have to make it wet. And it takes a little water. So the material is able to take, let me say about 1% of water. So the water is going in, it's going out, it's going in, it's going out. And after a small period of time, it's fantastic stable. So it is adjustable, adjustable to the mouthpiece, adjustable to your playing. And you really can break in the reed while playing. Huh? This is uh, an important information for everyone who is starting to play with that reeds, that those reeds are able to adjust to your playing style. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is they don't get cracks. So those cracks you probably noticed sometimes with Ligier reeds, yeah? they can break very easily. Um, that's impossible here. I want to demonstrate what it really means to have this material. So um, I take another one, this one. If I squeeze here, huh? so if I really damage it, this reed, huh? I push it here hard. Huh? Okay, you can see it now, it's damaged. I really, I'm able to fix it, yeah? to move it back. Yeah? So if I look, now it's straight again. And that's a big advantage for young people, for beginners, for amateurs. Yeah? They sometimes, they put the reed on the mouthpiece yeah? and then they touch it here on the tip when they fix it. Yeah? And sometimes they ruin it or they cause cracks. So with that material, it's easy to fix. That's one of the advantages. The second difference to Ligier is it's not temperature critical. So the Ligier material, this part of uh, synthetic, if it's getting colder outside, if it's getting warmer outside, if you play outside and it has 30 degrees, yeah, a festival, or if you have to play in a marching band and it's colder outside, let me say a funeral or something like that in a church where it's not uh, climatized, then uh, those reeds variate in the strength. So immediately when it's colder, the reed gets harder. When it's hotter outside, the reed gets softer. So this material is temperature safe. So whenever you play outside, inside, in winter, in summer, in different climate conditions, the strength is always the same. That's the next big difference between this material and uh, the Ambipole. And last but not least, um, I have to show that. So the material is grindable. So you can, oh, let me put that here. And I move the screen a bit. Now you can see that. I have a glass plate and uh, I'm able to work on those reeds, same as wood. So I can make it 
a little softer. I can prepare the rails. Huh? So I really can work with the material if necessary. That's important for teachers. Huh? So I probably explain that later on again. If someone wants to get more information about that, I'm willing to prepare online a read just to show. Um, that's important for teachers. So if you have a class and the people come with those reads and they have different mouse pieces or they are on a different level, then it's your job as a teacher to help the students. Huh? giving advices, of course, but also if there is a problem that you can react. And with this material and with a little knowledge, you are very quick able to adjust the read to your student, to your 10, 11, 12 year old student who is coming in and probably there is the read a little too hard or a little too soft or whatever uh, can happen if you have 10, 20, 30 students, then uh, that could be a big, big advantage because you can make it happen that your student is uh, coming in with a problem and going out happy. Okay. Okay. I have um, another good question here. What is the difference between the classic cut and the jazz cut? Yeah. <laughs> That's a totally different kind of material. Uh, why? If we understand what sound does. So if you have a clarinet or if you have a saxophone, then we have those classical approach. The classical sound picture, that what the sound should transport yeah, is in the classical part of course something completely different than in the jazz part. Yeah. So jazz in a way for me is sometimes the opposite. Yeah. So if you play classical music then you want that everything is coming very smooth, yeah, very gentle, out of nothing. Yeah. So your staccato should be very round and not doing a big push. Huh? If you play a jazz saxophone, then you want to have that your reed is really doing like, like a bite, you know? So if you play the hard notes, then this really should have a good projection. Yeah? It should go out straight. And you need this arousing, we call it, huh? this arousing in the jazz material on, on um, on the chess saxophone so that it is really going in uh, side and is touching you uh, differently than a classical saxophone. So the ambipoly jazz reed gives a brighter sound, a much more straighter sound. If you attack here, it's reacting harder from the possibility how it's oscillating, how it's vibrating. And so the jazz reed is especially made for exactly this kind of um, need for jazz players for this sound picture. And um, that's why a lot of jazz players in the meantime love it because it's vibrating. They feel this vibration here and they can form it. So two kinds of different synthetics. Okay. Will you be getting stockists in Australia? Oh, I don't know. Uh, this is something I can, I don't know. Good. Still no one online to talk with me, but there are a lot of messages coming in. Um, Okay, Silverstein is working for it. That's the answer here on the, the live chat. Good. Okay, then I prepare a read. Um, if there are no more other questions, then uh, I do something which could be interested for you. 
So uh, I take my clarinet and we do a very practical situation. So I have here the Puccini mouthpiece and now I open a fresh box of Silverstein and the Poly Reeds, strength number four. Yeah. So, brand new read. Strength number four. And now I'm, of course, excited. So, and now I notice the read is a little bit too hard. Of course, I can change the strengths now. There is a three and a half plus, there's the three and a half. But what if, um, yeah, you have to deal with it because it's a student, he invested, you are the teacher, or uh, it's someone uh, from a wind band and he is probably uh, not aware if this is the right thing or if this is even better, you are the teacher. You notice the read is a bit too hard very easy. Yeah. So, um, a few seconds with uh, sandpaper. You can see the dust, please don't swallow the dust. This is the same with wood or with a synthetic that's yeah, not healthy, um, doesn't matter. The material of course is completely food safe. Nevertheless, don't swallow the dust. Yeah. A few seconds, try to be balanced with your fingers yeah. and immediately This read is much cleaner. Huh? Probably I have to do it again a little bit, but the read gets softer, very, very gentle. And then you can do probably a quarter strength just with a few moves. Huh? Next is um, on the sides. I show this again. Sandpaper. Very gentle. Both parts, left and right. Okay. Now the reed feels a little bit rough, which is not a trouble because uh, with a smoother sandpaper, you can make it very smooth, very glossy again. you can hear that again it got a little free blowing more free blowing and a little cleaner and this is something you can do one or two or three times to help someone who probably has uh, trouble with the read or even for yourself if you notice that um, you played a long time um, uh, and then you stop and then you start playing again and the read is a little hard so just for getting started we can work on those reads and um, that's a big advantage. For example, if you think not only on the clarinet, if you think, for example, also on the oboe. Yeah, this is an oboe reed made of the same material. And exactly this material 
can give a fantastic good oboe sound but those players yeah, they have to be able to work a little bit on it yeah? so they have their knife and they scratch it a little and adjust it and then it works and so if a synthetic reed has the capacity to be adjusted a little bit, not too much. It's not about read making, it's just about customizing. Yeah? Then um, you have much more possibilities in teaching and for the teaching and for the students, that's um, yeah, a big advantage. Okay, another questions. How do you clean the rails if they have stains? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's um, not easy if um, there is already plaque on a mouthpiece once and this acid from the spittle is already in the material, then it's difficult. So there is, of course, um, there are those tools you use for uh, for the third teeth, you know, where you put it in water and then the black is uh, released, this can help. But of course, it's not the best way because everything what is, if you rub it even with vinegar, I heard, so vinegar is, is uh, helping. The best thing is to avoid it. Huh? And the best thing is to take care from the beginning that this is not happened. Because once if the black is already in the material, then it's, it's very difficult to clean it without changing the whole playing conditions of a mouthpiece. Yeah? So immediately you will have the feeling that the mouthpiece got a little bit brighter it's not so dark anymore or it's probably a little bit feels a little bit more open yeah? if you work too much on those rails just to uh, yes remove the plaque so that's why i mentioned maintenance maintenance is very important that you are take care of uh, the mouthpiece every day yeah? so those mouthpieces they can really stay shiny for many 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 years if the players are aware of this is important huh? to clean. Okay. Another questions? Um, that's also uh, something you have to know about hard rubber. Hard rubber is a material who is getting a little bit dull from UV light. So if there is too much UV light, uh, that's why most of the mouthpieces are always in the cases and uh, don't let them stay too long in the sun because the sunlight is making a chemical reaction and then uh, the mouthpieces also get a little bit brown. Huh? So like this one, huh? you see? So this is not only uh, a hy hygienic problem, so it's also sunlight who made this mouthpiece a little brown. And uh, so cover it. Huh? When you play, fantastic, but if you don't need it, cover it. That's why we have mouthpiece caps and uh, this is the best way to cover a mouthpiece. Okay. Good. Then um, probably I uh, talk a little bit about insights of uh, a mousepiece maker or what is making mousepieces great. In a way, I um, 
prepared a few a few slides for you. Okay, so um, here, for example, you can see that this is now uh, a facing of a mouse piece. So here you can see this red one uh, is the table of a mouse piece and then here is coming the opening. So here you can see the opening of a mouse piece. And what I want to show you here in this graph is uh, the difference between computerized mechanic mechanics nowadays, so where everything really is based on physics. Yeah? and based on uh, computer edit design. Whereas this green one, uh, as you can see, for example, was a handmade mouse piece. So this is that what customers, when uh, customers come to me, where here, when I measure handmade mouse pieces or mouse pieces which are not made computerized, uh, where these facings, as you can see, are, yes, not on the highest quality because uh, you have a lot of bumps here and the facing is not designed here. It's going up and down. Huh? It's like a hill up and hill down. And of course, this is a big progress we made in the, the last 10, 20 years that we are able now to mill, to computerize uh, mouse pieces. And uh, for example, Another picture which could be interesting for you is uh, how to adjust facing to reads. So um, here in that picture, you can see a design facing. Uh, and here you can see the read, how it, it, this read is aligning. So this is a read on a facing, how it's put on. And here you can see this is the part where your ligature, uh, the ligature is fixing the read. Uh, so ligatures have a big, big impact and uh, exactly those uh, string ligatures. Uh, so they, of course, they fix the read very, very gentle. That's why they are so successful because the fixation of the read here on the table, uh, as you can see, has to be as flexible as possible. And then if we uh, simulate um, the vibration of a reed. So here you can see now how the reed is vibrating in your mouth. Yeah? So this is the reed and this is the vibration. It's going up. It's going down and here you can see how the reed is touching the rails. So probably you can get an insight if you computerize uh, facings, that's that what I'm working now for more than 20 years. If you computerize and you can align a facing to that what the reed is really doing in the mouse uh, here, you can see that straight aligned to the read. Then of course you can create mouse pieces which are balanced to a read. Huh? So for example here, this is the last file I want to share with you to this topic. Here you can see how mouthpiece makers, professionals can influence the facing and align it exactly to that what a reed is doing in your mouth. And uh, I think then now it's clear 
more how a mouthpiece and the reed has to work together. Yeah? You can't play a reed alone, you can't play a mouthpiece alone, they have to work together and this is really knowledge to make a synthetic reed work on a mouthpiece because uh, they both have to be simulated, that's that what I do and then I try to develop facings exactly which are matching to reeds, reed trends and reed behavior. So this is probably something you never thought about um, because in the last, hmm, in the last 10, 15 years, if you look up at Toman and if you look at products, then you probably notice that there was a vast increase of products. So a lot of facings, a lot of different materials, reeds, uh, hundreds and uh, hundreds of different brands in the meantime. And um, yeah, because of course the market is growing, but on the other side, there is um, still always the quality and the professional making which is uh, recommended by the top players and there is a lot of knowledge and background it's not only producing a mouthpiece uh, it's also how a mouthpiece maker is communicating with his material and of course how far he is in his technology to understand what is needed here yeah, in the communication of wooden or synthetic reeds. Another question. Okay. Not so far. Yeah, um, this increase of mouthpieces and reeds is um, not easier for the customers, even for the teachers. So in my opinion, there are not so many clarinet teachers worldwide who have really an overview about this vast offer of uh, mouthpieces and reads. And so those seminars and probably even this platform here could be very helpful that uh, the teachers out there get again a little help and support what is really going along, huh? what is matching, huh? because it's not so easy to find now a mouthpiece nowadays. If you go um, at, um, let me say Toman, you find hundreds of different of styles and openings and facings. And uh, a lot of that isn't telling you about the quality and isn't telling you anything about that, what is really uh, important for you. So it's also for teachers more and more difficult to give an advice and uh, yeah, then uh, those insights could be helpful. Okay. Hmm. Good, then I have um, another video for you. If you want, you can see something which is um, there's a Q&A section too. Hello? Okay, yeah. So here you can see, for example, hmm? this daughter. I'll prepare the video for you. Now it's gone. Why? This one? This one? Ah, yes. Okay. Now it's here. Put it in the middle. So here, for example, you can see how mouthpieces are produced in a mass production. So those are those uh, synthetic mouthpieces out of resin, out of um, many, many uh, different brands. And this is uh, exactly how a machine is throwing out mouthpieces every, yes, 20 seconds. Huh? So it's an injection molding machine and the machine is putting out mouthpieces 
uh, all over the day. Yeah? Just it's injection molded and then it comes out. Of course, um, those mouse pieces, they are a mass product. And the difference between a mass product and something which is master crafted is not only that, um, yeah, a different way of technique. A master crafted mouthpiece yeah, has also something to do with your connection to the work. So you, you form the mouthpiece not only by tools, you form it also here. Yeah? So for me as a player and for me as a master craftsman, it is so important that I touch my tools and I take a little time with them. So if they just mass producted, I think we hear that in a way. So a high quality mouthpiece needs, same as a clarinet, a time from a craftsman. Yeah? This time I spend with the mouthpieces is going in this material. And so I always try to get a high level on technique, but also I know every of my mouse pieces need some time with me. It, they need some time with uh, people who touch it, who look at it, who take care of it. And uh, the more time you spend with something, the more loaded it is with emotions, the more it is imprinted with that what makes us human. And for uh, a business, for an artistic business, as uh, clarinet playing, this is something which is, for me, uh, a big difference between a mass product and a high quality product. So if there is a craftsman behind who is really dealing with that and is taking it here uh, to his heart. Okay, another question. Anything else I can help you? So someone tried to talk with me, but then was over. <laughs> Hi, Nick. It, this is yeah. Calvin. Hi, Calvin. Hey, hey. Um, I don't know if you're able to read the chats. I'm able to read the chats, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing some of the questions here that, um, okay. that went unanswered. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I saw, I saw, yeah, I had to scroll down my photos. Yeah. Could, could you recommend which mouse pieces has less resistance among all of my mouse pieces? Yes, uh, of course, I can recommend that. Uh, the, yes, the mouse piece with the most free blowing part is the Verdi mouse piece. So the Verdi mouse piece has, uh, yes, less most res less resistance from all of my mouse pieces because it's a wider at the tip and the tip is more opening, it's more open. And so uh, this is the most free blowing mouse piece in the moment of out of my production. Okay, next question. Uh, my wife and I play 40 years old Charles Bay mouthpieces on buffet. You see, this is uh, a part of our daily business. So there is so many brands out there in the facings and we never know exactly what those facings really represent. There is no norm, there is no standard out there. So uh, KC11MO, M mouse piece on a before, buffet hour 13, yeah. <laughs> I would recommend you to try the Buccini mouse piece because if this is a classical mouse piece, then uh, the Buccini mouse piece is matching to so many people in the meantime. So uh, we often get questions of people who want to have an advice which mouse piece they play and which mouse piece of our production is going along. And in 70% of the cases, it's the Pacini mouse piece because this is that what so many people make happy because it's very convenient from the opening. It's a little closer, but nevertheless, not so much resistance. 
and they can find easily reads. And uh, this is also very important that you can find easily reads. If you find reads, then a mouse piece gets much more, um, yeah, benefit. You have more benefit from a mouse piece. Okay. Yeah, there's too many mouse pieces in the world. Thank you, Nick. That's right. Um, I don't know if there are too many mouthpieces, but one of my principles I always had was that I reduce the varieties. So, so making 10, 15, 20 facings, I think there is no need for it. There was a very uh, famous guy once, it was Peter Smidl from the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. And I remember when I was a student, he was giving a masterclass and he said, uh, probably for the classical clarinet, we need three, three facings. Yeah? A uh, more narrow one, a medium one, and a more open one, and that's it. And the mouse pieces have to be on a high quality. So then three facings are enough. And that's exactly what I try to do. So I reduce for the French system, for the German system, uh, I reduce these varieties because there's so much a little open, a little closer. That's not so important. Important is the average quality. Yeah? And if the mouthpiece is on a high quality and the concept of the mouthpiece is uh, intelligent, then that's it. Yeah? And then there are people who say, okay, I want to have it a little freer or want to have it a little closer, but that's it, yeah? not more. And if you look at some uh, sites of uh, offers where you can purchase mouse pieces, then you see something about 40 different facings and no one does understand really what those facings do and what they impact. Okay, another questions. Okay, I think I answered most of the questions here, all of them. Anything more? Good. Then I'd say uh, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for this uh, short insight on, um, sorry, another question here. He used the Soloist M he bought in 2007. And uh, it's not, yes, the, the Soloist M is a mouse piece which I stopped to produce, but uh, the Verdi mouse piece is exactly the follow-up. So the Verdi mouse piece has the same geometry than the Soloist M, but uh, it's in a way for me a progress because the sound is um, again a little bit more in the center. So try the Verdi mouse piece and you will be happy if you are um, happy, have been happy before with the Soloist M. Okay, so. I should play a few notes, of course, I play a few notes. Yeah. With Ambipoli and Puccini, good, then uh, I'll do that. So, Puccini and the Ambipoli, uh, read number three and a half, and probably this is then my uh, way to say bye-bye. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the questions. Whenever you want, you can write us via email to our company if you have further questions. And um, BK and his team, they know a lot about all of those products so they can give you the best advices whenever you have questions and uh, yeah. Hmm. 
Puccini and Bipoli. <laughs> Uh, I think it's Beethoven here. Yeah. yeah, sixth of Beethoven, the theme, that's it. Okay, a little waiver, by the way. the high notes because some people have trouble with the high notes but that has nothing to do with the synthetic reed that's also a trouble with the wooden reed so the very high notes are easy not so easy to reach if you don't want to lose sound quality in uh, the rest of the clarinet and uh, yeah another tune this is um, the uh, Dvorak beginning in the orchestra of the cello concert. Oh. Thanks very much for joining me and uh, I hope you stay tuned in these difficult times and uh, you enjoy music just because of the sound. Sound is so important, sound matters, and the sound is that what makes you always uh, yeah, joyful when you play. If you like your sound, then you like the clarinet and the playing, even your students. And uh, please remember, you are your listener to 100%. So whenever you play, your body is listening all the time. And so if your body likes your sound, you enjoy clarinet playing all the time. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, bye-bye.